In this video, I'll show you how to clone or back up an existing external drive such as a micro SD, USB stick, or SSD, then restore or write the image to another device. We'll also discuss how to resize a drive to take full advantage of the additional storage when moving to a higher capacity drive or card. Keep in mind the media to be cloned can come from any external device, such as a Raspberry Pi 5, a Steam Deck, a retro gaming handheld, or any other. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. If you visit wagnerstechtalk.com and select the menu option Guides and then Common Tasks Guide, it'll take you to written instructions of everything we're going to cover in this video and a bit more. You can also just visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash common and go there directly. The first thing we'll discuss is how to take an existing micro SD and make an image backup of it. Basically, all that means is that everything on the card will be saved to a single file that ends in a .img extension. Inside that file is everything that was on the source media. That source media can be any removable device, such as a micro SD card, a USB stick, or an SSD. To create the image in Windows, we'll use a tool called Win32 Disk Imager. Simply click the link, and then the download button, launch the installer, accept the license agreement, and follow the prompts to install it. On this Raspberry Pi 5, I've installed PyOS Desktop, configured several settings, and added a bunch of applications. I'd like to transfer this 64GB card to a larger 128GB microSD card without having to do it all again. Keep in mind, what's on the card can be any operating system, such as Bodicera Linux, RetroPie, you name it, anything. I'll use Win32 Disk Imager to create the backup image file. There are other ways to accomplish this, but we'll focus on creating the image file in this video. I'll use this micro SD reader, which supports both USB-C and USB Type-A, to read the contents of the micro SD card. To avoid backing up the wrong drive, I recommend disconnecting any other storage media. Now, launch Win32 Disk Imager. And if you haven't already, plug in the drive you wish to create a backup image of. Under the device heading, verify the drive letter matches the first drive of the removable media. Under the image file heading, click the folder icon and browse to the location where you would like to create the image file. I'll be saving it to my internal D drive in a subfolder called Archives. It's up to you where you would like to create it. Make sure that the location you select has enough free disk space for example, if you'll be backing up a 64GB drive, you'll need slightly more than 64GB of disk space on the drive. Now, enter a file name. Make sure it's easy to determine what the image contains, and don't forget to add a .img extension to the end. Then, click the Open button. That's it! We're now ready to read the contents of the media and save it to the .img file. Simply click the read button. The read process will take some time, perhaps around 15 to 20 minutes for a 64 gigabyte image, so I'll skip forward. Once the read was successful, click the OK button and exit Win32 Disk Imager. In the next segment, we'll discuss how to write the image to a new card. Next, we'll discuss restoring or writing an image. In addition to cloning an image you created to a new micro SD, USB, or SSD, you can also download images from tons of websites on the internet, such as Bodicera Linux, Recallbox, and a near infinite list of others. There are various tools that you can use to write the image, such as Win32 Disk Imager, which we just used for creating the image, or another popular option, which is Belina Etcher. However, with Etcher, I have received some comments from viewers that tell me they were having issues. While I haven't personally, in those cases I recommended another tool for writing the images, and it has always seemed to work for them. The tool is called Raspberry Pi Imager. Pi Imager may be found at raspberrypi.com forward slash software. It is great not only for the Raspberry Pi, but for writing any image to any type of removable media. 
Another great thing about Pi Imager is that it can be used not only on Windows, but also Mac OS, Ubuntu x86, and on the Raspberry Pi itself. To get started, click the download link, run the installer, and follow the prompts. Then launch Pi Imager. Under Raspberry Pi device, click the Choose Device button and select No Filtering. Under the Operating System heading, click the Choose OS button. If you'll be writing your own image, select the Use Custom option towards the bottom of the list. Browse to the location where your image resides, select it, and click the Open button. If you haven't already, insert the media you wish to write the image to. Then, under Storage, click the Choose Storage button. Again, here I recommend disconnecting any other external storage devices to avoid accidentally overwriting the wrong drive. Select the media you wish to write to, then click the Next button. When prompted to apply customization settings, just select No. You'll be warned that the data on the selected media will be erased. If you're sure the correct media was selected, click the Yes button. At this point, Pi Imager will begin writing the image to the micro SD, USB stick, or SSD that you selected. This process will take some time, so I'll skip forward. The image will then be written and verified. Once the write is successful, click the Continue button and close out of Pi Imager. In the lower right, you can then safely eject the external storage media and remove it from your computer. Back at the Pi, I can remove the new micro SD, insert it into the Pi 5, and we've now transferred the image to a new card. In the next segment, we'll discuss resizing the partition. In this segment, we'll resize or expand the partition. I recently purchased this Anburnic RG Nano. It's a cute little retro gaming handheld, but the micro SD card is an unbranded 64 gigabyte card. If this card later becomes corrupt, it can be extremely difficult to find a replacement, so I'll make a backup copy of it using Win32 Imager as we've already seen. I may also decide to add more games to the card. For that, I'll restore the image to a 128GB microSD card using a brand I trust. Lastly, to utilize the full capacity of the 128GB card, we'll expand the partition that contains the games. We'll quickly review the first two steps as we've already covered them earlier in this video, then we'll discuss how to resize the partition. I'll insert the original micro SD card for the RG Nano and start up Win32 Disk Imager. Then click the Browse icon, locate the folder where I want to create the backup image, and give it a useful name. Then click Open. I'll click the Read button and Win32 Disk Imager will read the contents of the card and write it to the image file. Then exit Win32 Disk Imager and remove the original micro SD card. Switching over to Pi Imager, I'll set Choose Device to No Filtering. Under Choose OS, select Use Custom. Browse to the location that contains the RG Nano Backup Image file. Insert the new 128GB micro SD card I want to write the image to. Click the Choose Storage button and select the new 128GB micro SD card. Click Next and No to the Customization dialog and Yes to continue. With the magic of video editing, the image creation is complete and I'll now exit Pi Imager. To resize the partition, we'll use a tool called Disk Genius. There is a free and paid version. I'll be using the paid version, but the ability to resize a partition is available in the free version as well. Click the link to download Disk Genius, then click the free download button and follow the prompts to install it. Now we'll start Disk Genius. On the left hand side, you'll see all the drives connected to your computer. On this machine, I have two internal 4TB SSDs but the only one we care about for this video is the one that starts with RD, or Removable Drive. Make sure the capacity reported is what you would expect. Under the drive, you may see one or more partitions. The size and number of partitions will vary based on the image written to the removable drive. In this case, the micro SD card. You can browse around and see the contents of each partition, 
In this case, the one we want to expand is the one that contains the games. The removable disk F appears to be the one we want. Yours will vary, so be sure to see what's on the disk before resizing. If I click the Game Boy Advance folder, we can indeed see all the game ROMs that exist in that folder. From here, we'll click on the removable disk F, and in the upper right, we can see there is 61.1 gigabytes unallocated. I'll right click the removable disk F and select Resize Partition. Position your mouse cursor between the partition and the unallocated space, click and drag it all the way to the right. Now click the Start button. You'll be warned to back up important files and there should be no bad sectors on the disk. Well, we already have a backup of this card, so I think we're good there. Just click Yes here. It will again prompt us if we're sure we want to resize the partition, and yeah, let's go ahead and do it. The partition will then be resized. Once done, click the Complete button. If we look at the results at the top, Instead of having 53.7 gigabytes available for our games, we now have 114.9 gigabytes. The resize was successful. We can now close out of Disk Genius and safely eject our micro SD card. We can now take our freshly cloned and resized micro SD card, insert it into the RG Nano, and enjoy playing some games. I hope you found this guide helpful. If you did, please click the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, I definitely appreciate your support if you do so. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.